And up next, we have the Elder Scrolls Anthology main series by Kronos Returns. Hello, guys. So, <laughs> yep. So, without a doubt, just gonna Sorry. It's yeah. <laughs> start game, and that's when time starts. So, three, two, one, start. Okay, so first things first. Oh, I kind of chose the wrong thing. <laughs> Uh, that's fine, that's fine. It's gonna just <laughs> lose a little bit of time for me creating my character. You gotta build it up. You know? This is <laughs> yes. all the build up. That's how it is. You gotta get everybody excited. You know, it's like, oh man, it's an awesome game! <laughs> yep, so we're going I mean... to choose a Dark Elf, which is from Morrowind, and we're going to look for pretty specific stats here. So we're going to want a lot of gold, a lot of speed and a lot of intelligence. That should be good enough. And we're going yeah. to make our way through this cave, which is probably the hardest part of the run. <laughs> One thing that'll be pretty apparent from the start is that the first couple games are very close to games of their era. They are much older than Morrowind on. So they're more of a false 3D in a sense, at least in a uh, in Arena's case, uh, kind of your old school dungeon crawler game for most of the gameplay. But uh, I don't know. There's kind of a separation between Daggerfall and Morrowind that happens, and yeah, it's they're still fun games. But Arena is the most random of the speed runs. So, we'll see how that goes. Yep. So, I actually got pretty bad RNG right there because I got rats, and rats actually have a chance to disease you, and if it happens, you kind of have to restart the run, which is pretty unfortunate, but we got the also, also, you have access to all of Tamriel. Whoa, this game is big. Yes. <laughs> so, also, I had to... Like, in this game, you have to do stuff when it is daytime. Whenever it's nighttime, all the cities and stuff, you can't, like, enter into, like, houses or castles and stuff without, like, a bunch of... Like, because they're all closed. It's nighttime. <laughs> Not if you listen to your Uncle Shigora. Shops are always <laughs> open. It's just that sometimes you don't have to pay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so right here we're going to make a couple important spells. An invisibility spell, a levitation spell, and then a fortify speed spell. So we're going to be able to get through one particular part of the game very quickly. Okay. So once we finished making our spells, we're going to go to our first quest location which is this castle. I do not know that much about Elder Scrolls Arena lore, but yeah, basically just do the quest. I believe it's here. <laughs> I'm not super up on it either, to be honest. Like, Morrowind On is my specialty. Also, hi, I'm AlloK47. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself yet. But the basic idea for this game is that the emperor, uh, who is the same emperor in the first four Morrowind, or first four Elder Scrolls games up through Morrowind and Oblivion. In Oblivion, he is voiced by Patrick Stewart. So you'll get to look forward to that a little bit. Uh, he is currently imprisoned by his battle mage, uh, kind of like a general mage type person, uh, Jagar Tharn, and the whole purpose of Arena is to free him and save the Empire and such. Yep. So we go through Stonekeep, and now we're going to go back to Stonekeep again. And what we're basically doing is collecting sheets of paper <laughs> for this entire run. <laughs> Very interesting run. So, what what's going on is, in this game, uh, this sheet of paper is a quest item, 
And for some reason, in the latest version of the game, uh, this quest item keeps respawning. And since whenever you pick up a quest item in this game, it counts your current objective as being completed, you can just pick up the same uh, sheet of paper over and over again and complete every single quest in the game, which is kind of funny. <laughs> it just works. Typical Bethesda. Okay, so now we're going to go to Skyrim. This is definitely a winter hold right here, where we're at. Looks very much like the one that's in the actual Skyrim. It is snowing. And now we're just trying to wait for daytime. Oh. And you just have to hope you don't get ambushed by enemies because they stop your wait timer and you have to go inside and outside again to reset the wait timer. Which loses time, but it's whatever. Again, this run is random. This is the College of Winterhold, guys. We're going to go talk to the Archmage, and then definitely go to Labyrinthian. This uh, stone keeps another name for Labyrinthian, yeah? Sure. Definitely is. See? I mean, it's it's probably <laughs> connected to Labyrinthian somehow, you know, via that huge cavern underneath Skyrim. Like, it probably extends a few hundred miles this way and that way, right? Yeah, definitely. See, we just picked up the stone tablet, obviously. Not like a sheet of paper on the floor that... <laughs> okay. And now we're just gonna... Head out, back in again. Oh, forgot to choose a place. Here we go. Head out. Head back to Stonekeep. <clears throat> and do the same thing. <laughs> Arena is probably like the least broken considering all the other Elder Scrolls games <laughs> which is kind of funny yeah. since it's like the first game so the first game you the one you kind of expect to be the least polished and also the one that you know you're just going around collecting these pieces of paper right mm -hmm. <laughs> okay leveled up and yeah, like, <laughs> we could make some miss jokes here, definitely, if we wanted to. <laughs> okay, and now we're in Elden Root. Unfortunately, I'm getting some really bad RNG here. Typical marathon luck. Because I've had nighttime every single cycle so far, which is pretty unfortunate luck. <laughs> Here we go. Now head to the castle. Get our next quest. Okay. Yeah, there's not too much to say about this game other than <laughs> the amount of stone keeps we do, which is like 17, I believe. Yeah, 17 it's stone keeps. Basically, just run back and forth through stone keep, get another quest, and come back. Other than that, it's actually a really fun game to speedrun since you don't have to learn much, but the movement tech required is actually pretty challenging to just get around all the enemies pretty fluidly. Bonus points if you don't do any key rebinding. Yeah. If you haven't played Elder Scrolls Arena before, you should note that 
it might be a good idea to rebind your keybinds a lot because in the, I believe the default controls have your arrow keys as being the movement controls. And that is definitely not the best way to go about playing the game. I remember those days, and I can't go back to them. <laughs> WASD has spoiled me hard. Not to mention, to attack in this game, and in Daggerfall as well, uh, you have to hold down right-click, and then swing your mouse back and forth. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I would recommend going to God for these games. Yes. Getting them to run otherwise can be a bit tricky. Oh, bad RNG again. <laughs> it's like a 50-50 ch chance that it is nighttime when you travel. <laughs> so I got four nighttime cycles in a row. That is, what, a 6% chance so far? That's pretty bad. <laughs> well... One and two to the fourth, so that's one in sixteen. And I'm getting ambushed quite a lot here, so yeah. oof. <laughs> it's no fine. need to thank me. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, thanks, Meta. Now we're going to head to the next mages guild for our next quest. Okay. That quest. Also, it's pretty important in this game to not misclick no, because I, if I recall correctly, if you click no by accident, you can kind of just crash the game because the game's like, oh shoot, <laughs> you're supposed to take the quest, but you didn't. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> and then it just crashes. It's pretty it funny. It just works, except when it doesn't. Okay, so we're about halfway done. This is the fourth city we've done. Okay, I got stuck on a treasure chest and that orc. That was kind of weird. Okay. Yeah, orcs are playable races. Uh, they're a playable race from Morrowind on, but in the first two games, they are always enemies. And fun fact, the Skyrim speedrun actually used to use Orc. Mm -hmm. But I'll get into that when we actually get to Skyrim. Yeah. Okay. Run's going fine. Other than bad RNG, nothing, nothing's bad. Nothing bad's happening, which is good. I mean, it's kind of hard for this game to go badly unless you mess up really early on in the prison. So, yeah, it's a really consistent game. Other than just RNG day-night cycles. There is good RNG for this game, if you see the light. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, shoot. There we go. <laughs> okay. No, it's night again. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, game. Wow. Again, no need to okay. think. <laughs> so, that's, 1 in 32. That's pretty bad. Not gonna lie. Hey, it's day. Uh, this way. Yeah, most of this game is basically remembering where to go and being good at just strafe running. So in this game, strafe running or running diagonally is the fastest form of movement, as is that it is, is yeah. in most DOS games. Or older, like, style games. Yeah, it's the case in the first three Elder Scrolls games. It's not until Oblivion that they fix it. 
But Oblivion has plenty of ways to go fast. <laughs> also, this game generally has music, but if you mute the music in DOSBox, which is what is used to run the game, uh, it actually makes the game run faster by two minutes. The music actually slows down the game. You can even go further to mute the sounds as well, but shouldn't matter as much. But it does make it really sad because it's such a cursed strat. Like the music in this game is actually pretty nice. Just costs a lot of time. Uh, in terms of getting good RNG in this game, uh, if you get day cycles every single uh, city, then you have a really, really good chance of getting world record. <laughs> I believe the current world record, which is sub-19 minutes now, it's like 1856 or something by QSHV. Yeah, QS putting... <laughs> he pushed that really hard. Yeah. Like, kudos to him. Yeah. He's one of the, uh... Like... How do you say it? Did I do Stonekeep twice? Or did I miscount? Oh no. Uh, shoot. I think I did Stone Keep twice. There we go. I think you did it twice. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's hard to keep count because you do like two every time. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, is it? It's actually daytime, even though it doesn't look like it. But people are outside, which means you can go places. Also, where am I? Wait, shoot. Uh,. Oh shoot, I traveled to the wrong spot, that's why. It's High Rock. <laughs> yes, you have to make sure you get your locations correct or else it, it's not a good experience. Okay. There we go. Uh, is it nighttime, daytime? Uh, there doesn't seem to be people. I'm going to be yeah, safe. <laughs> this looks like nighttime. Pretty definitively. So, Get you got unlucky. The one time you got lucky was the time <laughs> you went to the rock. Yeah, rip. That kind of sucks, but okay. That's fine. There we go. By the way, if there are any donations right now, now would be the perfect time for it. Well, what I do know is that, again, we are Calathon Fireleaf 2019, and... <laughs> You know, uh, what we're doing is um, raising money to show support for the West Coast firefighters during the wildfire season. So um, all the donations that we do get will be going towards the California, California Fire Foundation, um, which supports the firefighters and the communities that they protect. Okay. In this game, clicking the scrolls is probably the hardest part of the run. Just clicking the scrolls and the doors. Because, like, their hitboxes are just weird. Also the bob for moving. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to Stone Keep. Five more Stone Keeps after this, guys. We're almost through Arena. <laughs> uh... 
So if you saw all those wolves, you know where they are. That is going to be an important thing when it comes to certain types of wolves in Daggerfall. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. Certain types of wolves are going to give you quite the trouble. So hopefully that goes well. Okay, Stormhold, here we go. Now I went to the right spot. Hey, it's actually daytime! <laughs> yeah, let's go! Good RNG for once. <laughs> the first time that it actually counts. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can click things from super far away. As long as you can see the person, you can talk to them from like such a far distance. I believe that wasn't like discovered until QSHV like was like, hey, why do we walk like all the way up next to them? You can like talk to them like a mile away. <laughs> it's certainly more amusing to talk to them from far away. Like, oi, you there? You have a quest for me? <laughs> what the fuck do I do? <laughs> Come here and I'll give you the details. I can hear you just fine from here. <laughs> All right, fine then. Sounds like I something from Monty Python. <laughs> it really kind of what I was going for. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting for you to become the Frenchman. Tell them that that you know where the Holy Grail is, and then launch a cow at them or something. Fetch a lavasha. Okay. For those of you who don't know French, that is get the cow. So there's one city left once I collect this scroll. Which is Morrowind. And then we do three more stone keeps, and that is... Elder Scrolls Arena, so hopefully that goes well. The next game, which is Daggerfall, is going to go, like, it's probably the hardest game for me. Wait, so you're, you're, you're skipping right to Morrowind? You're, you're not, you're not... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Definitely. Oh. I am getting good RNG where, uh, if you guys didn't see, like, there's a brief flash of blue which is like the ghost lady talking to you. And you need that before every single uh, time you travel out to get your next quest. Oh, I got hotboxed. Okay, that is bad RNG. <laughs> okay. So, you see the fog on the screen? It That's called a hotbox, and what happens is it makes your game run slow. Like, really slow. You move at, like, half the speed you normally do. And it's kind of just RNG whether or not you get it. And yeah, I got it at the... <laughs> yeah, at a pretty unfortunate time, too. Because that's probably the longest walk. Okay. But yeah, seven out of eight castles were knights. Night cycles, which is... Really, really bad RNG, but it's fine. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. So a couple more stone keeps. Load over. So two more after this. And then I'll jump right into Daggerfall, although I'll probably need to pull up my notes just in case, because that run is quite a hard run. Yeah, Daggerfall, while nominally comprising just a very small amount of the area in Arena, is... The biggest game. <laughs> it's yeah. actually like the biggest uh, non-like procedurally generated game, I believe. 
I believe it's, it's like the size yeah. of the UK or something. Yeah, it's it's actually huge. Like if like, you try to walk from one side all the way to the other, it'll take you just as long to like do it in real life. <laughs> like in the UK, it's like insane. Okay, here we go. Last stone keep, and then we're done with Elder Scrolls Arena. Okay, click that. Uh. And... Click the scroll. There we go. That is Arena. And just as a formality, because every single Arena runner does it. <laughs> like, if you don't do this, you have to... You're not an, a real Arena runner. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so if you wait a long time here, Jagar Tharn, for some reason, has Rhea Silmane's voice, which is kind of funny. <laughs> And then we do a fight. Can we win? I don't think we can here. And rip. There we go. That is Arena. Okay. He Next did step. actually win before he lost. By yes. Means. Yes. Okay. Let me pull up the speedrun notes because I really need it. Okay. Yeah, there's a, like a couple things in Daggerfall which are actually super important to know. Especially there's one RNG quest location, so I have to just make sure I know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Daggerfall. Oh, didn't want to load game. Start new game now. Okay. So we're going to create our character, and this is going to take a minute or so to create our character with the right stats and everything. All of these skills are very particularly chosen, like it's actually really important, otherwise you might not have the right stats for your character and that's yeah. really bad. Yeah, one of the main things about the Elder Scrolls series as a whole is that you gain levels and the stats associated with them by leveling up. It's a little bit simplified starting in Skyrim, which kind of is thankful because these arcane mechanics kind of work better in older games. But all of this stuff is decided to... A, like you see his speed stat being very high. He's good at running. And then he's good at some other particular things that he needs to be good at in order to do what he needs to do in this run. And additionally, there are a few things that are random upon the first, in the first two games, including hit points. So there is a random factor with some of those stats. Okay, so here we're at Rip Market. I'm gonna borrow fifty thousand gold. Uh, wait, shoot, did I borrow it? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay, <laughs> if I didn't, that would have been bad. Okay, here we go. So we basically took a big loan from the bank, and we're never gonna pay it back. Uh, totally not bank fraud. The run will be over by the time you need to pay it back, and by then you're a savior, so hopefully they can expense it. Okay, so right here I am making a couple spells. These spells are really important. You use, like, every single one of these in the run. And... You have to make sure you do the spells correctly, otherwise you kind of, like, ruin your run. Okay. Sounds like your game audio is a bit high right now. 
Yeah. Uh, let me fix that quickly. Open volume mixer. There we go. That should be a bit better. All right. Hopefully, you can hear me now. And last thing is Slogfall. There we go. Should have all the spells. We are good. But yeah, like I was saying, basically, hopefully by the time you have to repay the loan, since by then you will be saved or having killed the King of Worms. You know, if, if not killed him, technically, at least stopped him for now, you know, a while, then hopefully they can just expense it or something. <laughs> so right now what I'm doing is some fast leveling, and I'm trying to just get to level 8, which is what is required to beat the game. And yeah. basically, I'm just traveling back and forth to locations and casting a leveling spell really quickly by holding down like five keys at once while traveling to these pixel square locations. It kind of, <laughs> kind of hard. Okay. Need to kind of keep count here. There's actually a similar exploit in Skyrim if you make transmutation magic free. You can uh, grab an item with telekinesis, then fast travel across the map, and it'll go from whatever lowest level it can be to, the high, to 100, and you can use that to power level a character. It's not too different, just this one requires a lot less setup and has less of a strong effect. Okay, I am level 7. I'm going to do a couple more levels just to be safe. Oh, you don't want to travel back to the same location either, because if you do this for too long at one particular location, you'll crash the game. So that's why you have to travel back and forth and you can't travel to the same location. Okay. Should be good here. Yeah. Level 8. Okay. Here we go. 98 speed. You a speedy boy. Yes. Very speedy. Okay. Oh yeah, another thing that I'm doing in this game is something called buffer jumping. So I open up the travel menu, and then if I hold down the right keys, it'll make me, like, boost forwards at a pretty high speed right there. So I'm going to enter this mansion. And then get our first quest of the game. Where we have to get... This lady, Morgaya, to get married or something, I think. At least that's what I'm guessing. <laughs> the split's name is Morgaya's wedding, so I guess so. And we're just going to make her get married to this lich kind of guy for some reason. Don't ask me. Sometimes you do what you gotta do. <laughs> so, in this game, it's actually the easiest game to go out of bounds. All you have to do is, like, climb up against the door, and then kind of just fall through. Daggerfall things. So this is why you need the levitation spell. Mm-hmm. So we just got married, or got this person married. And now we're going to head into our first 
major RNG thing. Everyone's favorite werewolf. Werewolf? No, there is wolf. Where? Okay. So, so this yeah. quest this is... <laughs> is in a very, very heavy RNG quest. Uh, because of how it is, I have a backup save in case I don't find the werewolf. I'm going to give myself like a good amount of time though to find it because I should be able to make estimate. Uh, yeah, there we had a, uh, we had a relay on the <laughs> RPG Limit Break channel of the Elder Scrolls games, and one of the runners just got absolutely mercilessly yeah spent like an hour trying to find the werewolf Venoa Venona Coven okay have to remember yeah. that it was awful <laughs> like they were the fastest going into Daggerfall and they were the slowest leaving Daggerfall that team was how do I spell this place game uh no <laughs> not Vanwell Venno <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, definitely sounds like a cool relay. <laughs> Indeed, Bubbles. Okay. Uh, let's make a save game here, just in case. Speaking of which, I maybe it would be a nice thing to do another one of those. Okay, uh, unfortunately this dungeon layout looks really bad. Lots of caves, but... Maybe I can make it work. So, I'm gonna just search around all the major possible spots for a werewolf. Which could and be somewhere. Yeah, this is how this section goes. You basically wander around. Werewolf! Out of bounds, where are you? Okay. Okay, this, like, big rooms like this are generally really bad for just finding werewolves because it's, like, not likely that they'll be there. But, like, they could be in there, but it's really, really hard to check. Also, I'm listening for a very distinct werewolf sound. But the thing is, multiple creatures in this game make the same sound, so it's kind of confusing. Okay. Come on, werewolf, where are you? Also, oh, like, you have to get really close up to, like, the specific rooms in order to find them because for some reason the quest NPCs like are like you have to get really close up to them in order to like find them which is pretty dumb but you know those are not werewolf scheme also they the werewolves cannot spawn on the edges of the map either, so that's why I'm checking the map periodically to see where I am on it. See, I was really far west. Okay. No werewolf. So, okay. So we talked about this game being really, really big in terms of the world map. This is one dungeon here. Yep, one dungeon, and it's just huge. Like, imagine trying to just do a playthrough of this game. 100% is, like, impossible, isn't it? It's, like, just so big. Fortunately, I don't think... Okay, nice crash. I went out of bounds there, but, yeah. Okay, so, I don't think we'll get a werewolf from this seed. <laughs> So, we're going to kind of <laughs> use a different save that I made today, where I find the werewolf. 
Hey, look, it's the werewolf, guys. I found it. <laughs> and there we go. So now we're going to uh, teleport. And yay, we completed werewolf, guys. And now we go to uh, Longbury. Wrong keys. Longbury. There we go. And now we're going to find where this person is. And we're going to ask the townspeople where they are. And we're just going to go through a lot of dialogue here and find one person that knows. There we go. Now they should tell us where it is, so that is northeast. Pretty far. Okay. Uh, yeah, this building. Now we just have to find out where this person is. It's a knight. Should be in this room. There we go. Uh, rip more. It says 12 days, but this game actually lies to you. So this, this is one of the quests that can actually fail and you can never complete the main quest. So see, if it, I went with 12 days, it would have failed because that's rip more in nine days. <laughs> so five is say, three and three. I gotta say, I love the name rip more. <laughs> yes. We're going to also kill this zombie. There we go. And rip more. So we just traveled away and back, so we'll be on time for this day. And now we just have to find the palace, which is actually really good RNG. It's like right next to... Uh... Okay, uh... I don't think I actually waited long enough, so that's kind of unfortunate. Uh... Let's travel away and back again. Oh, rip more. That's why you have to kind of like type the entire name of the place a lot of times. Uh, east. This way. Please be a person. There we go. Yeah, you just need the person's name to be on that tab because that means that they're in the city. And now we're going to unlock the store and try to find this person, which can spawn in like three different locations. Okay, there we go. And I forgot to teleport. Okay, so. We're going to have to walk back the normal way. <laughs> because I forgot to get my anchor. But that's fine. It's only a couple seconds. Like 25, 30. Now we're just flying all the way here. And that's like a courier-like quest that we just completed. Basically, we just took like a letter from one person and then gave them another letter from another person. Blah, blah, blah. We are actually the courier from Skyrim. <laughs> okay, so we got our next quest there. And... Back to Scourge Barrow. OK, 
Okay, we'll climb up against this wall. Get out of bounds. Bethesda doesn't care about boundaries in games. <laughs> he can just go anywhere. And we love it. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Now we're in Sentinel, and we're going to kill a Lich King, I think. Lich King? Something. Yeah. Here we go. So, here's the other way you can get out of bounds. If you fly to the ceiling, and then you just clip through. <laughs> Pretty easy. There's like so many ways to just get out of bounds. Oh, I forgot to explain uh, the direct drop. <laughs> I'll show it after I do this stuff, okay. So here... We're going to actually do something called the super, super buffer jump. So this might take like a couple tries. So I'm going to loiter for one hour just to get rid of my floating save over this game because this is very precise. So I do a buffer jump and then cast slog fall or slow fall. And what that does is it makes me travel very, very fast to find a location that you normally can't get to without, like, doing other pre prerequisite quests. And because you're traveling at such a far distance, the way you're comp- like, the way you're pointed matters a ton. So hopefully I pointed at the right direction. <laughs> And we're just going to wait here until I land. Oh, there we go. Now we're just going to keep jumping. Oh, nice. That was first try. That's really good. Whoa, nice. <laughs> okay, so the direct drop is if you punch against the door or something and hold jump at the same time, you like fly in the air. And while you're falling, uh, you can just clip through the ground because Bethesda. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk to Medora. She tells us to get a unicorn horn, which is in Shedungant. So we're going to go into here, clip out of bounds again, and just grab the horn. There it is. Teleport back. Hi, Chops. <laughs> Okay. His luck, by the way, Chops, his luck has been crap so far, by and large. He uh, had to load the backup save for the werewolf. He had seven out of eight night times in Arena. <laughs> it's been rough. Okay, Orsinium. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens in marathons. You always have bad RNG, so just have to adjust for it. OK, 
Okay. So we're going to go to this orc guy. Uh, oh no. Oh no. That's the worst one, isn't it? Oh no, it's okay. It's fine. This one's fine. Okay. So there's uh, four random quest locations that you can get from that orc guy. And one of them, which is Greensley Hall, that one is the worst one because it has four possible random locations and it is huge. So the one I got, which was the mausoleum, is not the best, but it should be fine. Okay. So we're going to save the game in case. And we're going to try to find the mummy, which has the dust of restful death. So we're going to first check the lantern room, which is right here, and it good RNG, yay! Actually good RNG. <laughs> For once. Oh no, I forgot to set an anchor. Wait. Do I need to set an anchor? Yeah, I needed to set an anchor, I just forgot. That's fine. <laughs> just means I have to fly over again. Hello, Medora. Here's the dust. And now we go back to Daggerfall. And I have to be careful not to buffer map, because your game can just crash if you buffer map for no reason. <laughs> At, like, Dureni Tower in particular, which is the location where Medora is at. Now we're going to head back to Castle Daggerfall, complete a quest, and then by the time I complete this quest, I uh, the dust is ready for something. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't actually completed this game, so I don't know. Like, the time I tried playing it was before GOG had their settings out, so I had issues with DOSBox setup. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anchor. Okay. Through any tower, and then I'll make a save here, just in case. Because this is where the game can crash quite a bit. Okay, talk to Medora again. The powder is ready. And now we're going to go to Neva Chesterbra. And my game crashed. That's why you make the safety save, guys. And don't buffer map at any Tower, because that's what happens. <laughs> It just doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> just doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So now let's not buffer map, we're going to let the game load, and going to take this kind of slowly, just so the game doesn't crash.
There we go. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Now climbing on this house. Onto the roof. Head right here. Point south. And just hope for the best. Super jump. Hopefully get the text pop up. Uh, didn't mean to click loiter. Hey, I leveled up. Level 9. Okay, come on. Just jump over. There we go. And Lysandus' tomb. I clicked my character menu by accident. That's fine. So now we're going to head north. And then northeast. Down this thingy. Using like the geometry of the map to just go down faster is kind of fun. Yeah, it's one of the things about levitating in this game is that you go up or down very slowly. So using collision with the bottom side of a slope, like kind of rubbing up your head against what you should be walking on, can help you go down faster. I just had to pull up my notes just to make sure I didn't travel to the wrong spot. Here we go. So we just got the cutscene of the tomb opening kind of thing. Oh, I kind of didn't mean to do that. That's fine. Now we're going to have to just go up for quite a while. Use this geometry speedy. Okay. And now we're going to kill... Lady Woodborne or Lord Woodborne, I don't know. There we go. And now, last random quest of the game. So we're going to get our inventory. We are going to Cathway Dairy. And now we just have to find this last person. Oh no, the guard's right there. There's a guard that's going to... Oh no, please don't. You see the guard? <laughs> oh no. The guard's actually going to capture me. Oh no, I have to run. Like, if he catches me, the run is kinda dead, so... Oh shoot, I, I just jumped past one of the guards, oh no! <laughs> okay, please don't ruin this run for me, game. The thing is, the guards keep spawning in too, so I kind of have to be careful. Okay, this is the green mug. They are the law, shoutouts to Puri Puri. <laughs> there we go but yeah if they hit you once it's like the it's like you've been captured kind of text pops up so you have to be kind of careful uh it's this way i forgot to set a teleport but that's fine you can alt f11 which is a cuts, uh, it's a hotkey, which I forgot to explain. So, if you use Alt F11 in this game, also let me save here just in case, I've had a run died here before on PB Pace. Okay, we're good. But, I just love yeah. how you can fade. 
plays in and out of anything like it doesn't even the floor nah you can just phase through it the world nah just phase through it there we go we're good we're good <laughs> Okay, last quest of the game. This is actually a point where you can die at a lot, so I have to make a safety save. <laughs> okay, we are good. And we're going to make a save right here, because you can just die instantly. Like, these enemies here just one-shot you, so you have to hope that you don't get hit by this guy shooting blue orbs. He actually just kills you in one shot and has, like, sniper aim. <laughs> just god tier. Okay. Just go in, under, nice. And now we just fly to the end of the game. Click this green gem. The Chaos Emerald. Which, if you look at it, it actually looks like one. <laughs> kind of funny. Okay, there's the end. So we're going to clip under the floor out here. Fly to this emerald, click it. And that is Daggerfall. And spooky cutscene. Hog. <laughs> okay. So that is Daggerfall. Let's go. Now Morrowind. Yeah, now we're getting into the games that I actually up. know well. <laughs> Do we have a quick moment? Yes. Sure. Because we have a twenty-five dollar donation Pog. from <laughs> Worm Talon, and he 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 says, "Ah, the Elder Scrolls, where you save the world by picking up litter." <laughs> Flying through the void, hopping a fence, Stand up. opening manual. doors, and not Would following you... the horse user manual. <laughs> definitely, that that's well, not even last night, definitely so the right way to describe I the series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure yeah. Let's go. Okay, here is Why? Morrowind, here comes the car. This and hopefully so, this goes well. One of the hardest tricks is right at the start. I'm only no. <laughs> I, I didn't land it. I lost two seconds, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a bad so, Morrowind runner. Yeah, obviously Rip. the uh, intent is to get past that guy. This is Still uh, straight running because it's faster in Morrowind. So the first thing he has to do is to create his character. It's a little scripted in here. So, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to play a red guard because they have speed and the incredible rush of them. And he's going to uh, be a particular class that also uses uh, yes, speed because expecting. this is a short run and uh, the other stuff just isn't there are necessary. Few ways we can do this and the choice is yours. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. So here I'm opening and closing the pause menu and just use that to line up where my cursor is for the next uh, pop up. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release. Yeah, and uh, obviously the steed sign makes me go faster, so you just kind of pick up that thing, then drop it, and. Uh, then the guard is going to yell at him, and he'll be able to pick it up again. Uh, you can also just grab everything else in that area, and it's fine, but whatever. So, yeah, uh, he used that spell to phase through the wall. He picked up that ring, gave it to the guy who actually owns it, and that is going to give him a big opinion boost with our real year, which is going to allow him to get much better deals from him. 
So he needs some particular items from you, particularly scrolls of intervention. These scrolls of intervention are going to allow him to warp around the map. Now he is going for another really important item, which is the scrolls of Icarian flight. These increase your uh, agility by 1,000 points for seven seconds. What that means is that you can jump an absurd distance. And now he's using one of the scrolls, which is going to take him to Balmora, and he is going to head up to the Alchemist here. The Alchemist has potions, including ones of Mark and Recall. Mark and Recall is like the teleport spell in Daggerfall, so you mark a place, and then you recall to it, and that's going to be important. Another scroll takes him right back to his exact position. He lines himself up, uses the scroll of the Kari in flight, and jumps. He's going to use another one in mid-flight, and then another one just before he lands. Uh, he's also still under the effect of Adrenaline Rush, so if all goes well, he will land right next to Odorsol, which is an endgame area that contains the artifact key. At this point, I should probably explain that he's playing on version 1.0 of the game. And that is important because there is a specific glitch that is exclusive to 1.0, which he is going to be using to use Sunder and Keating without activating the, uh, without having the, um, uh, what are they, the Wraith Guard, the Wraith Guard gauntlet, which is otherwise needed. He also used a scroll there to unlock that. He got a weapon that is not subject to me, and that Dwarven Halberd, which is important. And now he is switching between the two weapons that he has incredibly quickly because he is using the scroll wheel to switch. So you see Keen trying to deal a mortal wound to him and failing. But because he's switching so quickly, and because he's on version 1.0 of the game, he is stacking up his agility and speed stats very quickly as you can see because sometimes the game just doesn't remove the buff that Keenan gives. This is the area where Sunder is and he also needs to kill Dagon. Yes. Deminal is an important area so what he did there was Killing that guy with a lockpick. He swung with the dwarven halberd, took the lockpick in his spin, and the game just is like, you hit him with an undefined value. What is this value? Uh, it must be something big, I guess. Enemy dies. And when you have this much speed, you can just kind of walk out of bounds as you want. And uh, yeah, now he's in Dagoth, or he's just blitzing his way through the area. He's going to head right up to the final area set on the mark where I'm a god. Azura How can you kill a was, god? What a grand intoxication. How could you be so naive? Sunder no three times. Oh, stop! This and, place. Uh, Lay down your weapon. The general uh, update. Dagon Ur welcomes you, Nerevar, my old friend. But to this you place, no longer hey. have a burden of <laughs> Why have you That was kind of fast. Prepared? Sorry about the audio volumes. But yeah, that was morally. That was really quick. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, so that is <laughs> that is the shortest of the five runs by a reasonable margin, but not a ton. It would be much more significant if uh Oblivion didn't allow out of bounds, but that's a matter that I can explain in a bit. Also, we're going to have to kind of wait for Oblivion because my Oblivion for some reason takes forever and like it it just goes through these intro screens and if I try to do anything right now it's gonna crash. So I have to just wait for it to all go through. Come on. Here we go. Okay. So, if you have any donations, Meta, you might want to get them in before this run, because it's pretty short, too. Uh, yeah, this one's right, I believe. Huh, what? 
Huh? Oh, oh man. <laughs> I like I like fell asleep and you were still in Daggerfall and I wake up and suddenly we're done with Morrowind? Yeah. What? Oh I'm man. Man, I mean that 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 was that uh, was Sanic fast. Wait, shoot. Okay. I Wait. <laughs> okay, I haven't played this. Yikes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so right here just started Oblivion, kind of messed up my <laughs> shenanigans, like a bunch of stuff there, but that's fine. We're just going yeah. to try to clip through this wall. This is <laughs> just, this is mostly just shenanigans. Come on, it's not hard to clip through, game. So there's a certain amount of speed storage on saves and loads, and that's what he's trying to Come abuse on. here. It's not hard. This clip. <laughs> it might be better for me to restart. Because I might run out of... Yeah, I'll... I'm gonna restart this right here. Because I ran out of adrenaline rush. Or or I'll, I would would have ran out of adrenaline rush kind of soon. Yeah, so walls in, ob in Oblivion can be bypassed by going fast, saving, where your speed is maintained, and then loading. And if you go through the wall before the game there loads, we go. You, you're past. So yeah, he got past the wall, and uh, there's a bit of a wrapping factor there. Like you can see, he ended up back in bounds. And then quick saved, and now he's loading. And there's some scripting shenanigans that are going to happen in addition to the out of bounds. Unfortunately, Lee, these clips are not working well. There we go, finally. But the basic gist of it is he is very quickly navigating the tutorial area much more quickly than you would be able to if you weren't able to go out of bounds. So uh, for perspective, even with the reload, the restart, he would probably be talking to Boris or something at this point after punching Uriel Septim a couple times if you were doing no out of bounds. Okay, come on. Just clip through. And yes, I did mean punching the Emperor. So this clip is probably the hardest one and least reliable, so hopefully it can there we go. Nice. <laughs> that that clip is hard. <laughs> and yeah, like kind can... of RNG, so it's a good thing that I got it. And if you're wondering why he doesn't take falling damage, I'm guessing it's because because of the wrapping mechanic where you uh, fall and then you just kind of end up back at the top of the screen and then fall back into it, the game just compares the Y value of where you uh, were when you left the ground oh. and when you got back on the ground and says, oh, they're oh. really close. You don't take falling damage. But I'm not entirely sure of that because, you know, Bethesda games are weird. Also, getting stuck there could have been very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I kind of misclicked my jump button. Whoops. Clicked it a bit too late. That's fine. So, you might be wondering, like, he's heading through this area, and uh, you might be wondering what's supposed to happen. Like, you, you don't see... It, the, like suddenly the emperor is here he's punching him because uh you actually want to aggro the guards to make them move faster and then you yield and they get to you faster this is a technique in uh no out of bounds as well and this probably would have been about the second time like no oh no he's not no opening the door why won't you open the door come on here we go they cannot like, even with all the shenanigans, he's probably here at a pretty comparable time. Steed again to go faster. Again. Okay. 
<laughs> Come on. Hitting the Emperor to aggro the, bra the blade. No, so don't thing. kill- don't hit him! Why did you hit him? Come on. This is bad. Okay, please. Please, game. Okay. Yeah, the Firebolt spells are extremely potent because he is playing on a oh, low no. difficulty. I low need our, I need the two guards. Where are they? They're not following me. <laughs> they are not cooperating. Come on. They're on to your shenanigans. <laughs> hey, you. Come here. You How come here. Come here. I've never, I've never seen them get stuck that far back. Come on. Just keep going. Did Come the on. Emperor close the door on them? There we go. Now they're all following. <laughs> and yes, if you don't do this, they take forever to just walk all the way here. So we kind of have to do it. Yeah, I, I just have to say all of these games are drank in their own way. Uh, they were starting to walk backwards because I didn't go through this dialogue with the Emperor. There's no time. Okay, thank you, Boris. <laughs> okay. Come on. So yeah, uh, when you Come mess on. with the scripting we go. like you do in this area and things don't go quite right, they can get out of hand rather quickly. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Why did I click that? No. Okay, it's fine. I... I have a save. I have a quick save. I accidentally clicked exit to main menu. <laughs> or not. No, I clicked exit game instead of exit to main menu. Whoops. We're fine. So, yeah. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the whole point of that little sequence was that he needed to get into this next area where he is now. And that <laughs> requires Boris to open a door or two for you, which is unfortunate. It slows oh. things down a fair amount. Okay, here we go. This should work, please. <laughs> and here we go. Easy. All right, so. <laughs> He just completely skipped the Emperor dying, by the way. He is now in the sewers, which is you're only supposed to get to after the Emperor dies. So the Emperor lives, I guess. Yay. And now he's going to leave the sewer. And um, what are you going to do? You don't even have the Amulet of Kings, do you? Nah, hmm. who needs who needs amulets when you have wall clipping? <laughs> So, if any of you are familiar with paintbrushes in this game, that is an old method that actually used to be used for what he is doing now. But if you get through here, inside the Temple of the One, you can actually access the end game. So that is what he's going to do by clipping into it. Come on. I, I swear, I never get that clip first try. I think my PB doesn't get it first try either, it's so sad. <laughs> there we go. I always get it second try. That's fine. And now, yeah, now we're at the end of the game, guys! We went from just in the tutorial to beating the game in like... Yeah, um... Hello? Look at all Thank the Phaedra. <laughs> For some reason that quest took a long time to show up. Yeah, you do actually need that quest to trigger, <laughs> but then you just head in here, you wait, and uh, Martin Septim runs his uh, runs his way over from the Wayne and Priory, and he'll be here soon. Then you can talk to him, and the game's over. We have to I do. And Oblivion. Hey, GGS. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, Beirun Stagon. Hi, Akatosh. Or well, we <laughs> quit the game before that. But we'll yeah. <laughs> okay. Now Skyrim time, guys.
Here we go. Are you ready for some horsing around, people? This way. So, um, a couple things to mention. He already performed a glitch. In oh, the sprint glitch, which <laughs> that was <involves>. weird. <laughs> I've had that happen. I've had I've been deflected like that. Um, yeah, the infinite sprint glitch is uh, a variation. Uh, some of you may know of it's infinite sprinting by torching, uh, uh, using a torch. Um, but this is a better version because it lets you jump while in sprint. It's used by uh, loading, reloading. He also did a very deliberate quick save before just piecing out of Helgen. That is going to come up in a bit. Uh, he is playing as a high elf because they are the tallest race and therefore the fastest because that's how the Elder Scrolls does things. Uh, there's a save there, and now he's back at that quick save because he needs to get his hands unbound. So I'm going to shove this guy. There we go. There you go. Grab this bucket. Spot. Yeah, buckets are important too. And now that he has his hands unbound, he's uh, doing a quick technique here. First try. He's going to get him to kind of load properties from two saves at once, called a load warp, and that is going to put him here with his hands unbound. That was a good Helgen. Very good. It that uh, that load warp is. Very precise. It is frame perfect. And, Basically uh, frame is... perfect. Not really, yeah, but it, it, it's the definition it's, of what frame perfect would be like <laughs> it's, in this it's game. As as you, yeah, as close as you can reasonably get in this game and this engine and just the way the game works. It's the simplest way to explain it. Now, you might wonder why he's running off in this direction. That is because there is a horse in this direction. Um, not this dead one here. Uh, <laughs> Rip. Oh, he did grab some stuff. He did grab some stuff from the chest. No, he wants a live horse, one that he can ride. And there is always a hunter up in this direction with a horse. So um, that horse is going to become rather important. So hopefully my horse tilts go well. My PC is not as good as the one I had at GDQ. So yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be yikes. So, at, so yeah, yeah the, the hunter gets off the horse to uh, shoot at someone. He gets on the horse. Now people are shooting at him, which is only a minor inconvenience, actually. And whoop! So, um, how to explain this glitch? I have tried a few times, and I think I can get close. Essentially what happens is when you are on horseback and you get off horseback at... Uh, very unusual angle for the game the game doesn't quite know where to put you so it just tries to put you places and your speed gradually increases at a rapidly increasing rate and because when you have a third person say your momentum is preserved you can do some very very silly things with it um, as you saw there, with him climbing up <laughs> the mountain um, to High Hrothgar and then discovering it and falling all the way back down into water because water landings make you safe from falling damage. At least in video games. Don't try that in real life. Okay, so this is probably the hardest tilt in the run. It's a ghost tilt, so what happens is we can clip through walls with this ghost tilt, <laughs> like with ghost tilting, basically what happens is I do a frame perfect save at a tanning rack or any sort of crafting bench thing. Uh, unfortunately, this is way too fast. I'm going to have to wait for it yeah. to slow down a bit. Yeah, fortunately, while you're tilting, if you're a little bit too fast and you're able to handle the speed, you can wait for it to tick down but 
one of the effects of the, <laughs> the ghost okay. scope, obviously, is that you just go through objects. Uh, your height is set here, so um, discovering locations is based on your height, and that is why you use particular places. But Tharadams is not a place you care about. <laughs> um, he's trying to discover... Wow. There it is. Uh, unfortunately... Close. That is about as good as I can get with that tilt. So I'm actually... Okay, wow. I I went to a enemy location. That's fine. So, because I PC isn't the best, I'm actually going to split this up multiple times if I need to. Yeah, the important thing here for this tilt is discovering locations. Um, old Heroldon is not ideal uh what he actually wants to discover <laughs> no old old Holden is uh that that's actually the place i go for so <laughs> okay oh yeah yeah because yeah, for i know the location i'm thinking of a different place which is where i usually go in my playthroughs yeah um so that's something he wants for later uh he also wants uh, to eventually do a warp up to the top of the throat of the world, which he's going to do by getting to a particular place. Then, uh, now he's at the top. No, I did not get to the top, but yeah. there's a backup um, uh, strat, which uh, last tense discovered. So if you load the quick save from the main menu, you can actually go back down and then try doing it again. And you can just keep trying until you get it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so that was not like, the right oh, spot. The game is like, oh, you're below the map, and then it kind of tries to fix it, and it shoots you up yeah, to back in bounds. The it's... spot is pretty precise, so I'm going to have to keep trying. And you have to do it from main menu, because if you don't, then it won't work. I mean, that last one was pretty close, at least. You were right by Notch's pickaxe, or the Notch pickaxe. Yeah. Uh, shoot. Maybe I need it to be back up a bit. Try here. Nope, still... Still here. Can I get this pickaxe? Not... If I could, I could yeah. do an animation <laughs> thing, but no. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep trying, it's fine. So yeah, the unfortunate thing is that he still has the Ghost Hill properties, so he can't really go down and discover the Throat of the World from there. Uh, that's why the Notch Pickaxe was potentially important, because if you can exit the state of the still Ghost no. Hill, then you can do everything. Okay, I, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to go way back a little bit so this might be a little bit i just need to get to the right location it's really hard because like i'm just looking at particular floor or patterns and this is so hard jeez where am i this does not bode well okay try here so okay uh i see four words okay yeah <laughs> yeah this is gonna take a little bit sorry oh that's why i see i was looking at the wrong angle so this should be it no ah this is getting irritating, sorry. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. We're still going to be way underestimate. Just keep going, just keep going. Here? There we go, yay, we did it! <laughs> Throat of the world discovered, that is what he wanted from that. <laughs> Okay, first try, definitely first try. It didn't take me an extra, like, three minutes or something. <laughs> Whoops. 
here. And each of these tilts has a oh, shoot. specific purpose. Oh, he almost died there. That was, was the wrong rock. <laughs> I, that was the wrong rock. I meant to go for the other rock, not that one. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell, especially. It's also really hard to control. Um, I should mention that one of the important things is that he still has the imp uh, the oh. uh, infinite sprint glitch active here because it makes it much easier to set yourself to either going forwards or backwards. Whereas without the infinite sprint glitch, which locks you into directly forward or directly backwards movement. Um, okay, that wasn't can... the best, but it works. <laughs> yeah, you can you can still load into a save with uh, lateral movement, but you can cancel that out pretty quickly and reliably with the infinite sprint glitch loading. And this is the next place he wanted to discover the Karth Spire. So this is a location he's going to want, uh, going to need to go to later, and he's going to run his way through it right now. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of parkour right here because it skips a puzzle and uh, it's not super hard to do with the high elf, uh, especially with infinite sprint. But it's still a little bit tricky. You have to kind of know how the collision of this area actually is, not so much just how it looks, and. Here he is um, going to discover. <laughs> the, uh, uh, oh yeah, Dawn Star. Discover the temple there, and now he needs to. Um, he's going to go to Dawn Star because even though there's you know, nothing I, important there, in terms we'll of the main quest, there well is right. a blacksmith ah. shop. And if you remember what he was doing a minute ago. Yeah, it's another ghost still. Yep, so Dawnstar has a tanning rack here. Uh, let me get the time set correctly. So there's a new glitch that was discovered where if you drag your wait timer using the mouse, you can actually... Okay, I said it a bit too late. But you can actually wait any amount of time you want. As long as you uh, just drag it from the number, <laughs> it's it's kind of hard, weird to explain. But you just drag it from whatever number you want to one, and then it acts as it waits only one hour or something. Also, he's rich now. Okay, got another tanning rack save. Gonna do another so... ghost tilt. In this game, if you drag an item over to the merchant's inventory, uh, you can switch whether you're buying or selling, so you can sell their own inventory to them. And he needs money for another technique, which I'll get to in a second. But in the meantime, he's tilting over here to Septimus' outpost. Uh, the low elevation of the Dawnstar rack is important. Uh, he's also trying to discover Katla's farm over here. East, Emp East Empire Company Warehouse will do in a pinch. There it is, Cutlass Farm. That was this pretty smooth tilt. And now, hey, he's in the Thalmor Embassy. How'd he get here? <laughs> and what's he going to do now that he's here? Well, uh, he's going to pick up the dossier that he needs for the quest that takes you here in the main quest. And... Uh, that means he's now at this point in the main quest. It is, as far as we know, the only, or at least the latest one that actually works to get you to that. So now he uh, needs, he, now he can talk to Delphine and he has skipped all of the main quest up to this point. Now we're going to head to Esbern because we totally know who Esbern is from just picking up those documents. <laughs> and yeah, Mongo just punched that horse, uh, and uh, that's allowing him to <laughs> pay his bounty and warp in here, which is a small time save here, but is a bigger time save in other guard warping scenarios. This is one of the main reasons that he oh, no. needs money. Note that I said one of. So because of infinite sprint, you can do that jump super easily. <laughs> Just literally jump around 
the bridge. I remember before Infinite Stay Spring trying it, and it is pretty doable with a uh, high elf. Uh, technically possible with an orc, but very difficult. Also, he got another bucket. Buckets, like I said, are important. And uh, at this point, uh, he's going to <laughs> have to do some dialogue skipping with Esbern here because he has a lot of locks on his door. So, if you want to say anything meta, or if someone go else has taken over, I told you to go take away. it away. What? You better come inside. Yep, this is just waiting time for Esbern to open the door. It takes uh, quite a while. <laughs> this will just take a moment. Well, I just want to say just that always... uh, this is the Calathon Fireleaf 2019. Um, and all the money that is raised for this will go towards uh, helping firefighters. There uh, as they battle wildfires and just prepare for the wildfire season and all that. Drag, no. um, we just greatly appreciate old, the drag, no um, one can your guys' support. Uh, the prof, as... we must go quickly. Yeah. Did you hear that? Okay. And now we're going to load warp out of here. <laughs> Rip. Didn't get it first try, but that's fine. Also, because of my load times, uh, some pieces of dialogue I can't skip faster for RTA, which is why I don't have to skip dialogue some at some occasions. And like I just edited a couple of my own, uh, like added a couple of my own strats into the run. Just because my PC isn't the best, <laughs> or my laptop. But that's fine. Hopefully I can beat the sub 2 hour mark, that's kind of my goal. But that might be pretty far underestimate by like 20 minutes, but at the pace we're going it's looking like that. Because this run actually went pretty well. I was expecting something bad to happen at like Morrowind or Daggerfall. Like really bad, but it didn't, so we're good. Note that he got another bucket there. Also, uh, he's walking in and out of the building to skip dialogue with Esbern and Delphi. Okay, come on. Delphine. This strat always works but why are you just okay <laughs> it's dumb <laughs> there we go it... normally it doesn't take that long but yeah took that long that time uh gonna save here just in case they didn't come up And now we're going to get the Elder Scroll. Just starting the Blood Seal cutscene, then immediately traveling away means it's still good. Now, it's you okay. can talk to Septimus here, but unless you have really bad luck, it is faster to steal what you need from him. So that's what he's going to do here. He's gonna First try. Him. Yay, good RNG. Nice. <laughs> I think the worst I had was like 14, <laughs> or something I, close I, to 14. It's I've kind definitely of seen over 10 in a marathon run. Okay, Elder Scroll time. So we're going to... Horse tilt, hopefully get a really good tilt. Okay. That def was to redirect myself in the right direction. So hopefully that works out. Uh, the speed is not good enough. <laughs> I needed more speed. Rip. Yeah, so right now he's going to the exit point of the Tower of Mazark. And... 
uh, yeah, it's the exit point. You're not supposed to be able to get in that way, but you walls are suggestions when you want them to be, so it's something you can work with. Okay, here. Oh, okay. I didn't get the god tilt where you can, like, literally walk into the tower, but this is fine. All I have to do is clip in now. Which Clipping is, is a, kind of annoying, but yeah. It's annoying, but there actually we go. not super hard. This is one that you can try to do at home if you just kind of watch what you need to do. All you need to do is get in there and be able to hit that uh, elevator trigger. And now the hardest puzzle in history. So he puts the lexicon down and he just hits buttons. Anyone want me to do YOLO bucket? <laughs> I do. <laughs> YOLO bucket, guys. Me? I'll do it for fun. YOLO bucket is slower, but it's fun. And we are, we're going to be ahead of estimate, so why not? <laughs> It's a cool trick. So yeah, now he has the Elder Scroll that he doesn't know he needs yet because he hasn't even talked to Parthenax. <laughs> but that was a good time to get it, so that's when he got it. Now the next bit is a bit more dialogue skipping. Um, he's also going to head up to a particular table and grab a single sword at least twice. So that's going to be <laughs> his weapon for the rest of the game. Uh, this particular weapon is called Dragon Bane, and it has an additional damage against Dagger. And we uh, got four. <laughs> four of nice. them. It's not uncommon to get four. Um, it usually comes in multiples of two, in my experience. But uh, there are a couple of methods of doing that duplication. That is As burn hurry up. one that's used because it's the fastest. It's the fastest way of doing the dupe. Now there are some time and some position-based shenanigans. Also, uh, using the uh, kind of interrupt by running into them and well, <laughs> dialogue triggers are weird in this game so you're just manipulating them to get past them as fast as possible now we have so much time that we're going to just get married guys you know I feel like that's a good idea everyone get your pride emotes ready <laughs> Hey, Maramel, can I get married? How may I Let me know so, if yeah. I can get married. Um, the Temple of Mara is here in Riften, so you need to talk to Maramal anyway. Uh, hey! You need an amulet of Mara to get married. And uh, also, hey, there's a hireling here. You pay him 500 gold and he'll follow you. And uh, apparently he thinks you're sexy. So you're getting married now. Easy. And the time is 8.51 a.m. Okay. So I'm gonna have to... Wait an extra 24 hours-ish. Okay. And we're... Because we did the quest... Uh, well, we didn't do the Greybeard quests. We can't enter through the front door. So we just used the back entrance, which for some reason is always Where unlocked. Where did you learn of that? Have you learned nothing from us? No, but heed my warning. No, it is called. We do not regret this lot. Only Parthenax. He lives and he speaks to us only. Only those whose voices. And there we go. Now we do four quick saves and quick loads, and hopefully not softlock the game.
Hey, all three shots. Let's go. Oh shoot. I need to skip this line of dialogue and get that to happen. Okay. Uh, Mercurio's still with me, so I'm gonna do this. There we go. And now, everyone's favorite dragon, Mario. It's a me, Parthenax. So yeah, Charles Martinet voices him. Shout out to Charles Martinet. Awesome dude, good voice act. And we learned Fire Breath. So now we're going to equip it. Shout out Parthenax and go through all his dialogue. And now that we finished this dialogue, we're going to read the Elder Scroll and do the new weight glitch. It's pretty precise. But you have to learn the location of the Elder Scroll. Where is it? Oh. And we did it. We failed our wedding ceremony. And now we can so, yeah. move in the cutscene. There was an old way where you actually did that at the Temple of Mara um, by reading the scroll as you went in the door, basically. Then that warped you to this cutscene. Um, <laughs> the marriage cutscene also tries to play at the same time, and as a result, you're able to move in the cutscene. The cutscene is still going on, by the way, so. Um, he did some stuff to make some of the triggers happen faster, and now he's doing some other stuff while the cutscene's going on, just to save a little bit of time. Uh, he needs to eventually be able to go to both Windhelm and to Solitude to talk to you people to get peace comes to him. Uh, so, he was going to whack the guard, and that's going to get him to the palace faster. Guards are handy like that if you have 40 gold. Now we're just traveling around to speed up the cutscene. We're going to learn Dragon Rend. And to not softlock the game, we travel at very specific times while this cutscene is going on. Now we're going to speed up this fight right here by uh, killing Gormleif by. Oop, <laughs> okay. Mashy on this guy to skip his dialogue, and Mashy on this guy to skip his. to Dragon's Reach, and because for some reason everything, like, everyone still exists a thousand years in the past or something, you know? Typical Skyrim things. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. What's the meaning of this interruption? Please. Well, Okay, uh, we're going to equip the shouts. One, two, three. One, two, three. Equip dragon rent and land this shout. Nice. You have to land the shout 
quickly or else uh, Alduin will fly in the air for quite a while and it's really bad when that happens. He's doing another glitch here that allows him to maintain power attacks through a rather extended period of time. That is not as hard as you might think. It's just kind of a rhythmic double tap, like a, both your mouth's buttons at once, and it just kind of happens. And now we're skipping dialogue. Okay, I need to equip. Here we go. Just got infinite sprint. And then skip Alduin's dialogue. And let's watch Parth the next fly away, guys. I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to know it too. <laughs> it's such a fun glitch. Fun fact: I discovered that, like, I found out that that can happen. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I didn't think you were actually going to get that. I thought he was going to fly away before your dialogue, but then no, you had the dialogue going. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. <laughs> it's a funny glitch that I found. It's so fun to show off that one <laughs> because he just spins backwards in circles. Oh shoot! Throw back to the original release of Skyrim with the backwards flying dragons that were invincible. Well, when I say straight to the. I uh, learned of a certain uh, stone tablet said to be housed okay. in the Falls You want dragons that let the said to be in dragon burial sites. My I destiny to stop him. Okay. Oh. No. So, in order to get to the next uh, series of main quests, which are the last few, you either need to complete the Civil War for one side or the other, or do the Peace Council. And guess which is faster? By a lot. Peace Council. So, yeah. so we're going to bucket clip again. And again, the whole, the whole reason, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but the whole reason he has to do this is because unless you hit trigger points at the beginning of the mountain over in Iverstead, and up top, the game thinks you haven't climbed the mountain and High Hrothgar is closed. You have to climb the 7,000 steps or whatever it is. So, in order to get in, you have to enter the back way. Which means clipping through it. Now we're going to get to Tullius. Okay. Boop. You have committed crimes against <laughs> That's why we have our swords out to just to hit that guard for the very fast teleport right there. And conveniently here they take you to Castle Dower instead of to the actual uh, palace here. Blue Palace, which is convenient because Tullius is the person you want to talk to, not Yarl uh Ellison. Why? There's nothing they are getting my job is to quell this uh, you may have yes that's not what okay guards get out of the way thank you <laughs> and now we're going to head to Ulfric same thing just talk to him pretty simple He's a true north. I remember you. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. If you change your mind. Ah, uh, it's just the wrong dialogue. Yikes. Uh, now you gotta wait a bit. I have the okay. I can't afford. Good. I doubt the end. Yeah. And what would you? And just because uh, this is based off RTA time, we're going to have fun. Let's get married again. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you're going for in-game time, which is what most runs go by, at least for the leaderboard, because you know PC loads are inconsistent from one system to another, so you try to even things out by going by 
in game time and factoring out loads. Yeah, you... There's a load removal tool for it, so it's nice and easy. Yes, there are. I can't believe but you're speaking to me after in real time, the two it's methods you, are right? pretty close. One of them, uh, you just go, I'm sorry, Markirio. Courier, why? Like Rude. <laughs> You know, you couldn't have shown up at the time when it would be most amusing. There's a funny glitch that can happen with the courier later, but rip that now. So instead, wedding's back on. Totally. We're totally going to go to that wedding. I mean, all we have to do is sit through this peace council. Yeah, I mean, you got things to do. They scheduled the wedding for after this, right? Right? <laughs> right. Definitely. Oh. You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. And I should not have agreed. So, there are two main ways to do this bit. You can either do this method, or you can just do a whole bunch of saves and loads. This one was usually a little bit quicker in real time if you optimize it right, but uh, the saves and loads are much, they're significantly quicker, like upwards of a minute. I think it's 40 seconds-ish, but don't quote me on that. Kronos probably knows the number. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> but... Um, that's faster in in-game time. This, however, you go outside, you time how long you stay outside by jumping. When you go back inside, you can do some dialogue, because uh, there are certain options you have to pick. Then you go back outside, you jump a certain number of times, and then you go back in, you repeat until it's over. Okay. This is our home. Skip. Ulfric's line. So, Dragonborn, well said. And now, should be about done with Peace Council. Okay, didn't mean to pull out my swords, but whatever. <laughs> and I'm cross reference. By calling the dragon with. He's not completely. Unfortunately, it is not sub two hours, but it is kind of close. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is going to be still a pretty solid time, easily underestimated. So now that the Peace Council is over, he needs to trap himself a dragon to head to... Skuldafin, which is where Alduin is, uh, got his portal to Sovngarde, where he's eating the souls of the dead and such. So now he's going to go and trap Odaving here. Um, you can actually shout from inside the, uh, the castle there, which most people don't realize. And he's going to wait until hopefully the right time to go out and dragon rend. Right away. Got the shout. Now let's see if Odoving cooperates here. Because there's He's cooperating. This is good. good. Yeah, so if he doesn't cooperate, he might get fixated on killing that guard that's scripted to die. Instead, he's going to run away because dragons are scary. Um, and then he'll head back out and, hey, they're dragon strap and cool. they did it all for me all i did was shout at him <laughs> and easy good job guards now we're going to release him faster to go up here and release him yourself as opposed to talking to the guards so that's what you do a little bit of waiting to get out of being in position, then you fly off. And this is the point where I would have liked the uh, the courier to appear, because there's a hilarious glitch where the game can 
completely messed up your momentum and your sync with Odaving. And you fly off way faster than Odaving, and you just go fwing off into the distance while Odaving goes at about half his speed. And I love it. And because... Fuck it. Let's do this. No, no, fuck it. Yes. No! Oh, dragon. Ah. dragon, please. Dragon. This dragon is rude. Okay, so. let's just do this. Okay, dragon, so. you want to do that to me? Just bite me <laughs> off the bucket? Okay, that's so rude. So yeah, this is called YOLO bucket. Oh. It, you drop a bucket, you stand on it, and then you pick it up while you're standing on it. And uh, you can just hover. Um, the direction is kind of dependent on where and how you grab it, so it's a little bit inconsistent. That's uh, the big reason why it's called YOLO Bucket, along with the, the oh. distractions from enemies. Uh, this is not a great YOLO. Oh, that was so close. Like, the faster way, obviously, is to just tilt up the side of the mountain here, but YOLO Bucket is better in every other conceivable way. Okay, okay, that was jank. I think the arrow actually hit the bucket or something. Yeah, you almost clipped up through the uh, that was through weird. the floor even after that. Okay, I need to wait longer, do I? Yeah, I needed to wait longer. And then it okay, good good shot, <laughs> nice shot. That was a really good shot, game. Yeah. Thank you. These dragger freaking snipers. <laughs> so um, actually, I had a, another strat too, but it. It's not really safe to do. You could actually do a third YOLO bucket into the portal. Like yeah, here. That, that one was not consistent. Yeah. Instead, he's just going to run past this dragon priest and enter Sovngarde before he's able to close the portal. And now, just yeah. head to the end of the game. You with our... Not last horse still. Tilt. Last horse still. Oh, you, are. Okay. you have to like go down a bit further because if you don't go down far enough, uh, like you'll die of fall damage. Yeah. So this tilt barely saves any time, actually, but it does save time if you get it right. It's also risky because if you mess it up, you can. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just like phased um, through a wall. Okay. I I can't say I've seen it fail that way before. That was weird, Jank. Every time when you run Skyrim, you see something new. That's that's the cool <laughs> thing about it. You know, I've never seen that before, but yeah, it happens, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, instead. Uh... You run through uh, this run with infinite sprint is like I said not that much slower. That tilt only saves what brings you away? like I, I don't even really know if it saves any time in oh. real time, but it's cool. So oh, you show oh, oh. soon okay. is dangerous. By the way, <laughs> uh, yeah, he he can uh, he, he can, can one shot you. Quickly. Yeah, <laughs> so if, you have to be careful. Power attacks will one shot you, his normal hits will still kill you pretty quick, so you want to kill him as quickly as you can. So now enter here. Jump here. Hit the trigger for them to start speaking. And now we're just gonna go back and forth through these doors. Wait for these guys all to run over. But they're all super slow, so you have to go in and out, like, multiple times. Are they there? I think they're there. That's good. Sometimes yeah, it takes like forever. <laughs> like, there might be one straggler. Just so lose a right bunch here, of time. <laughs> this right here is the only reason that you need oh, Clear Skies Shout, because you need to get Alderwin to show up. So Okay, you know... <laughs> I, I, you know what I said, you can lose a lot of time because one of them's not there. One of them isn't there. <laughs> Where are you, Tolftir? I thought they were. I didn't see them back here. Not Tolftir. Feldir the old. Yeah? Yeah, Come there on. he is. Come on, hurry up. 
And he's the one that is, like, the one that needs to speak. So that actually sucks. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We're fine. So yeah, you just shout three times. You don't have to do the top level of the shout. You can just do one. Uh, but obviously, since it's a video game, you, shout, you do the thing three times, and then you move on to the next thing. Uh, and then he's going to try for a rather precise break that shall on Alduin. Uh, if he gets it right, Alduin will land super quickly. If not, then it'll just be a little bit slower. So going up to this specific point, uh, I'm just kind of going off of the timing, uh, you know, the dialogue and different things we have. A little quick save there for safety. And hit Alduin. Let's go. And time stops once Alduin dies, by the way, so be ready. Oh, 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 oh. This is scary. Okay, guys. Uh, please. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Normal. Normally, the heroes of Sanavangar take a bit more of the damage. There we go, time. Yay, we did it. <laughs> GG. Two o six o four RTA. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my in-game time I was kind of uh, recording off, or yeah, like I just have my in-game time off to the side. It is a 149.06. It's actually only 12 minutes from record, which considering how bad, <laughs> like how bad some RNG segments were, it's actually pretty dang good. <laughs> Like, Arena was awful, Werewolf was not kind, yeah. It, it's also only six minutes off my uh, RTA world record, or my RTA time, so yeah. So that yeah. is good. You could go marry Mercurio if you wanted. Should I marry Mercurio, guys? <laughs> Do I have time to marry Mercurio? When you have when you are ready to rejoin the list, return now to me. This rich boot. What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just head over to Riften and get married, guys. Let's go. <laughs> we have time. Lots of time. So yeah, just because you're you, you can get a third chance. Hello, Mercurio. Let's go. Yeah, what? Let's get married, guys. I can't believe you're speaking. It was a mistake. It's you. you know, the first time, uh, it was because I got taken to the cutscene by reading the Elder Scroll, and the second time I was dealing with politics. Now here, we can just get married. Let's go. Come on, Miramil, stop sleeping. It's a very important time. <laughs> also, I just want to say right now that marriage percent is one of the most optimized categories in Skyrim speedrun. If not the most optimized. Okay, let's see if Mercurio cooperated. There we go. This is the true ending to Skyrim. By the way, Skyrim any percent must end with marriage. Marriage. <laughs> journey forth together in this life. Okay, let's skip your dialogue. Do you agree to be I don't care. <laughs> I do. Now Do you agree to be bound together in love? All right, all right. Get on with it. 
<laughs> you? Yeah. <laughs> to you? Yes. All right, you're married. Get out of here. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> it's up to you, man. You the two of you with these matching hey, Mercurio, we're married. Are we going to celebrate, or are you just going to leave me? Oh, okay. That's how you feel. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's uh, the Elder Scrolls Anthology, guys. Mercurio left me. You know, he hates me. Even though he married me. <laughs> Rip. Feels bad, man. Time Just... to go on your honeymoon to the Shrine of Barithia, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be doing Halo CE Legendary tomorrow. So that's going to be really cool. And yeah, good luck to all the other runners. Yep. Yeah. That is it. Okay, uh, up next we have, we're going back on schedule with Cadence of Hyrule with Mumu Akai. Uh, we're going to get that set up and to you in the next few minutes here. See you guys soon.